So I have warned people that you probably shouldn't pick up a new gen system at launch. Uh, there's a lot of launch issues that always need to be ironed out. And really, it's, it's interesting looking at the Xbox Series X compared to the PlayStation 5 in this regard because there's definitely a lot less issues with the Xbox Series X. In fact, the only issue that seems to have come up with an Xbox Series S or S, I haven't even heard of an issue with S yet besides obviously more storage being nice to have, is that, well, sometimes the disk drive wasn't working. And it's a really strange issue. Uh, and the disk drive is rather easy to remove and replace yourself after having taken it apart. But yeah, uh, it, it's not an issue that seems all too common. It's happening to uh, what I would say is probably less than 1% of customers. And that's about it. Uh, the PlayStation 5, on the other hand, is having all sorts of issues. And these are issues that they claim probably weren't supposed to happen. Now, no, we're not talking about overheating. We're not talking about uh, anything to do with that or even the overall design of the inside of the system. We're actually just talking about using the system in general. So first up, here's what happens when Rich from Review Tech USA tries to log in and play Call of Duty Warzone. So this is what happens every time I try to log into Black Ops Cold War. Just freezes and the whole system restarts. This is fun. Beyond all of that, I have heard numerous complaints across all social media, whether it was Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Parler, it doesn't really matter. Wherever you partake, even here on YouTube, many videos out there of PlayStation 4 games crashing the PlayStation 5. And they have said, Sony has said that 99% of games would be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. And that might be true, but that doesn't mean that that backwards compatibility works to the point that PlayStation 5 doesn't crash. PlayStation 5 is having issues with, well, just playing backwards compatible games. Now, obviously, if you're just playing Miles Morales, if you're just playing Demon's Souls, you probably aren't experiencing any of these issues. But still, it is of concern. What is also of concern, at least uh, for people's sanity, is coil wine. The PlayStation 5, a number of units, which seems to be a pretty big number. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the percentages are, but definitely more than 1% of units are having coil wine. And it's really bothering some people because it's making the PlayStation 5, which was reported in reviews to be quiet, actually quite loud. Not necessarily as loud as like the PlayStation 4 Pro that feels like it's taking off like a rocket ship, but still very, very loud. In fact, here's some examples of that. Now, I have gone on Twitter to say that coil line is not actually a defect because it's not. Now, you might say, why do one system have it and some don't? Well, what is coil line? Coil line is basically the reverberation of electricity going through diodes or transistors, and it it, it kind of creates a hum. It, it'll, 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 it'll it, okay, let me put it this way. It happens on all electronic devices, but most of the time, the frequency at which it hums is inaudible to humans. Sometimes it becomes audible as well. And you might be like, does that mean there's a bad transistor? Does that mean the hardware's failing? Actually, no. Coil wine happens whether you hear it or not. The difference is when you hear it is you just happen to have a certain component on the board or in the power supply that is uh, not creating the inaudible version of that hum. So it could be a different component, a cheaper component. It could just be a different manufacturer, uh, but it's not actually a defect. It's not considered a defect. It's not considered a hardware point of failure. It's just an unfortunate part of electronics. A lot of powerful electronics have coil wine, but so do cheaper ones as well. It's kind of, um, not, it's a common complaint, I guess, in the electronics field, but it's also not considered a defect and doesn't affect the longevity of your system. I know, you know that sound can be annoying, but it's actually normal. And every system's doing it. Just most of the time, it's inaudible on higher end components. I would assume, unless, unless you buy like a 3090. There's insane coil wine on, on the 3090 GPUs. Anyways, it's not actually a defect. So it's annoying, absolutely. But, you know, if you want to return it because it's loud, I'm sure that, you know, many stores will offer return policies, but I don't know about exchange policies right now because they can't even get their hands on PlayStation 5s. The point I'm trying to make here is the PlayStation 5, and I noted this 
uh, as, as like when I was talking about, you know, these systems, whether they're ready for launch or not, I noted the PlayStation 5 is not feature complete. You can't even use hard drives correctly. In fact, there are numerous reports of people that are plugging in external hard drives to play PlayStation 4 games or what have you, and that's crashing their system as well. In fact, some people are getting their system bricked by external hard drives. The PlayStation 5 was not ready to go at launch. All right? The Xbox Series X is kind of like the opposite. The hardware and software are all ready to go and fully baked with hardly any issues, but we don't have the exclusive games. PlayStation 5 had exclusive games ready to go, but the hardware and software are not ready. What I'm trying to say is the PlayStation 5 should not have launched here in 2020. The PlayStation 5 should have waited till the spring, kind of like doing what the Nintendo Switch did. The PlayStation 5 should have waited until it was feature complete, that you could actually expand the storage in it at launch. That's something you cannot do, that you could actually have full backwards compatibility without crashing your system, that you could get a majority of units to not have coil wine, which can be tested, by the way. Coil wine can be tested in manufacturing before a product is sent out. And there's been some weird reports out there that one thing that happened with Sony is they're getting 50% yield on their chips and their GPU CPU combo. And that's not very good yield results. That means half the chips they make are garbage. That is not good yield. So that could be an issue too that's helping with not helping with the coil line. I don't know what's happening here and I'm not trying to show bias towards Xbox. The Series X is just a better designed system that is ready to go. You can expand storage at launch. You can plug and freely unplug uh, external hard drives all you want. You can hop swap storage if you want. There isn't any glitches in the actual software. Backwards compatibility just works, whether you're sticking a disc in or you're using Game Pass, it just works. Everything about it just works. And that's why Phil Spencer probably tweeted out that like, you know almost 4,000 different games have been played on the Xbox Series X slash S since launch because people are just going on Game Pass or, or play, using backwards compatibility like crazy. Everything's just working. In fact, there's even some strange things out there like Call of Duty Warzone got like a 120 FPS update on the Xbox Series X and it, it doesn't exactly hit it. it. It runs between 100 and 120 FPS, but that update doesn't even exist in the PlayStation 5. Of course, the game is cr is freezing on, on, in PlayStation 5, so maybe they're trying to work out that versus working out uh, higher frame rates. It, it's a little bit crazy to me that we're dealing with these issues at launch because well, I expect there to be issues, right? I expect there to be the, the coil wine issue is one thing. Um, okay, if that was the only issue, okay, it's an issue, but, you know, move on. Uh, if they just had, like, an issue with some of the controllers, with, like, the control sticks, like they did on the DS4 for PlayStation 4, okay, cool, you know, you can kind of get a new run of that, deal with it, move on. But, like, we're talking about systems crashing. We're talking about systems bricking. We're talking about systems freezing. I have not experienced any of this on my Series X, and I'm sure there's a number of you that haven't experienced on PlayStation 5 as well, because maybe you haven't done a lot of backwards compatible games. You tried out a wide variety of them. Maybe you haven't been playing Call of Duty Warzone, so you haven't noticed any freezings or hiccups or, or the system locking up. Again, some of you guys will never experience these issues because you're not playing the games that cause them, but the fact that there are games that cause them when Sony says, oh yeah, 99% of the library is backwards compatible. Okay, so is that 1% all these games crashing it? Because that's a lot of games including some of Sony's own offerings. So honestly, PlayStation 5 wasn't ready to go. You could argue Series X should have been delayed because Halo Infinite was delayed, right? Wait until you have a big exclusive game. But the platform and the system were clearly ready to go. So, okay, I can see shoving it out the door. And hey, it was the best launch in, in uh, Xbox Series X history, according to Phil Spencer, in terms of unit sales. He won't get into exact numbers anymore, but we know the best launch was a million for Xbox One. So it sold north of a million units at launch. Uh, and then you obviously have the PlayStation 5, which is just selling like hotcakes, but mm, it has a lot more issues to work out. A lot more issues to iron out in the OS. A lot more issues to iron out, potentially hardware-wise, you know, in terms of dealing with coil line. It's... This is a issue, a number of issues that we should not be dealing with at launch. However, as we have discovered over years, there always seems to be issues with systems at launch, which is why I keep telling people don't buy systems at launch. I can actually fully suggest you get a Series X if you just want backwards compatibility in 4K. Great. Uh, Game Pass is a great value. But 
I can't suggest anyone pick up a PlayStation 5 right now to play the games, knowing that they potentially might get, they might brick their system. They might, uh, you know, have all this locking up issues. And who knows how many of these locking up issues or system crashes will be the last time your system even turns on. You know, coil line is whatever. I can tell you, okay, if you don't mind dealing with that, pick it up. But this is not okay to me. Okay. PlayStation 5 should not buy it this year. Wait till 2021 when hopefully all these issues are addressed or the software has been updated or the, you know, this external or internal, uh, you know, expansion is uh, supported or something. These issues need to be addressed because at this point, I'm extremely worried that the failure rate of PlayStation 5 might increase. And I've talked about how coil wine isn't a big deal. You know, I've defended it, but I can't defend, you know, system freezes and system crashes and systems just getting bricked from external hard drives. I can't defend that. So. I am Nathaniel Rebelchance from Nintendo Prime. Happy that right now I'm just a PC, Xbox Series X, and Switch gamer and not dealing with potential issues with my PlayStation 5. I still want to get one though. This is where it's like a catch-22 because I am a channel that covers these platforms. So I still need to get one on hand anyways. And if I experience any issues with it when I do, um, obviously we'll talk about that and I'll show it to you guys. We'll do a live stream on it, a, a, a video to it. Uh, I have had one issue, by the way, with the Xbox Series X. I want to be fair here. I haven't had it happen again since, but uh, for a little bit, uh, at when after I had my system in sleep mode all night, when I brought it back, the cable it came with, the HDMI 2.1 cable, wasn't working. Uh, I tried other troubleshooting matters. I could not get a picture signal. I swapped out the HDMI cable to another HDMI 2.1 cable I have, and I've tried other 2.0 and 1.4, whatever. I've tried pretty much all the HDMI cables I had. They all gave a signal but that 2.1. But then, like a day later, when I wanted to run it back to my capture card to my TV, and I only have two, you know, I only have that 2.1 cable and one other 2.1 cable, uh, I decided to give it a try to see if I could keep my, 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 my top tier signal, and it worked again. And I haven't had an issue since. I don't really know what happened there. I've thought about a number of issues and looked it up. Uh, it's very weird for a cable to do, to act that way, to behave that way. So, you know, uh, sometimes when you don't get a signal, there's a handshaking problem, but that handshaking problem happens on the system level, not the cable. So I, yeah, I don't know. It was a really strange issue. But again, my system isn't spitting out noise at me. My system isn't crashing. My system isn't freezing. I just swapped an HDMI cable. And then all the cable works again. And I, I gotta say, I move my Series X around. I'm not a typical use case. Uh, my Series X has been in my hands over here. It's been in my hands on the table. I've had it in the background back here. Uh, I plug it and unplug it from the capture card frequently. So like, I'm not a typical use case as well. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm swapping cables and moving things around a hell of a lot more than a normal consumer would. So I'll, I, you know, that kind of issue is also something I don't think anyone else will ever have besides another YouTuber that does the same thing. All right, folks. I am Nathaniel Robojets from the Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry that this is kind of a negative thing, but you know, what am I going to do? Until the PlayStation's on hand, I can't really say a lot of positives because my positives will be the experience with the UI, the experience with the controller, the experience with the games. Those are things that I could talk about positively about PlayStation 5 if I have one on hand. For now, all I can do is talk positively about the Xbox Series X because I'm still playing it. I play it every day. I'm having a blast. It just works. I just need more games. And games are coming. So, all right, folks. I'm Nathaniel Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video.